So, what we finally concluded is that change in magnetic field which we uh, mentioned here can be demonstrated as change in temperature right. Uh, how do you measure this um, ma change in magnetic field? Let us go back to this nice setup that we have here and let us focus on this. The change in magnetic field can actually be caught by these magnets which are mounted here. You can see these magnets, these arcs which are mounted here and these arcs actually measure the magnetic field and the change in magnetic field we are going to uh, somehow correlate to the change in temperature. Right. So, that is a nice way to do. If you have a change in magnetic field obviously, you need to look at magnets. Uh, different types of magnets are available right. So, you may have to choose the right side of a uh, type of magnets for uh, such a measurement uh, 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 sort of uh, you know measurement come conditioning that you will have to do electronic conditioning that will have to be done circuit that will be required in order to make this measurement very effective. For that um, if you look carefully uh, at the magnets which are available there are basically um, um, you know three types of uh, magnets which one can actually put down. One type of magnet is the neobdemium um, uh, magnets, neobdemium magnet which is actually written as N D um, F E B. These are uh, normally called neobdemium magnets. Then there are samarium cobalt, S M cobalt magnets. Then you have alunico, alunico, alunico magnets, and you also have ceramic uh, magnets, right? So you could choose any one of them, right? So here is uh, the problem: you need to choose that type of uh, magnet uh, which essentially looks at very specific uh, properties, which have very nice properties. In order to meet this requirement of change in magnetic field, uh, uh, which will er essentially correspond to change in temperature, because you are really looking at bearing temperature. For that, you have to look at um, what is very important is the coercivity associated with this magnet. You can actually call it coercivity. You should look at this property, coercivity is an important thing and also the temperature coefficient because that is of great interest when you are trying to measure uh, the uh, uh, temperature coefficient I suppose is a single um, word. So, I will just in any way abbreviate it, but I should not further uh, reduce it. So, temperature coefficient this is typically this has uh, this uh, neobdemium magnet essentially has the highest coercivity some number and I am going to write down that number which is 30 and uh, there is a unit of course, I let you figure out what is that unit of uh, coercivity and it also has temperature coefficient which is 0 0.11 percent per degree Celsius. Um, and um, with a minus sign. I also want you to figure out why this minus sign is there right. It is quite obvious, but you will have to perhaps think a little bit to see why this is really written as uh, minus uh, 0 0.11 percent per degree Celsius. Fantastic. So, if you now come back and say okay, I have to measure the um, the bearing temperature which is here, this is the ball bearing, this is the magnet I have to choose. You can see already when you talk about uh, design for IOTs, you are actually talking of choices all the time design essentially means you cannot be just talking about one option, one particular way by which you are biased to a particular design. The design has to be very optimal, the design has to choose uh, rather uh, the design has to fit the requirement that you are looking at. Again here you see the design coming out, you wanted to use magnets for the purposes of measurement of temperature, change in temperature. For that we set 4 different magnets, neobdemium, samarium, cobalt, SMCO, then you said alanico and then ceramic. You have to choose one of them again 
and then that means essentially design means is just not one aspect but you have to keep looking at design alternatives and choose the best possible alternative. Now it might turn out that you may say why is this method the most appropriate way to measure the temperature of the ball bearing why are we choosing this method at all why do not we choose uh, let us say some uh, temperature sensor methods some in non invasive temperature method systems right. Now the reason why we do not want to do that let us go back to the setup again. The reason you do not want to do that is because most often these bearings are deeply embedded inside automotives any run any machinery which um, uh, rotating machinery which essentially you are trying to transfer power or you are trying to put in any rotating systems you have these now bearings which essentially will allow uh, uh, which you are trying to monitor they are trying to do a monitor them for their condition. These are all deeply embedded these are enclosed in certain systems. So, uh, any non invasive method of measurement um, is only going to measure the enclosure of the casing it is not going to actually measure the bearing directly. Remember you look at this magnets they are placed, placed on the inner race of the bearing and you have measurement systems electronic measurement systems which are directly reading off the temperature and actually me uh, measuring the magnetic field and how do you capture that that comes from this board this is a hall sensor and you can see that this electronic essentially is measuring the uh, magnetic field uh, the change in magnetic field you start reading the initial magnetic field and if the bearing is doing bad there is a change in the magnetic field which is directly captured by this hall sensor electronic and all of this electronic is now coupled um, uh, to the required uh, communication units and so on and so forth. Now the interesting part is this particular uh, uh, system essentially will uh, focus on how do you actually put together all of this well we mentioned about a board which was like this you can see that this is the PCB that we developed in the lab essentially has interfaces for connecting these wires directly to this uh, system and has uh, a sort of an energy storage uh, device which is uh, here this is a super capacitor or an ultra capacitor as they are called which essentially stores energy for measurement of this uh, bearing uh, temperature. Be and behind this are all the required power management circuits and the communication module. Let us look at a little more detail at this communication module you will see that there is this little system here which um, perhaps. Um, you may want to I put it this way um, no maybe this way a little bit um, I will put it this way and show you um, the ok. So, you see this little white portion here this is this this white portion here essentially is the chip antenna of a bluetooth low energy module which is integrated into this SOC. This SOC is uh, essentially a system on chip as it is called is from the uh, uh, from a company called Nordic Semiconductor right. So, I will write down Nordic Semiconductor is the name of the company from where we bought this uh, chip this chip is called NRF 51822 a very popular uh, microcontroller we will not get into the detail of this microcontroller at this stage. But just to tell you that this system has a microcontroller and also has a bluetooth low energy radio which is integrated into the system. As you know bluetooth low energy uses ISM band. ISM band uh, frequency of 2.4 gigahertz works in the range of 2.4 gigahertz and is also called smart bluetooth sometimes they call it as uh, they, they it is also known as a smart bluetooth and uh, some people 
uh, and, and in fact uh, it is actually the BLE 4.0 uh, system and this has advanced now and now the latest indeed is moved over to the latest. So, let me write it the latest indeed has now moved over to latest uh, latest is actually the 5.0 BLE um, we will get into this detail a bit later, but there were different uh, versions here there was a 4.0 and then I would say 4.x essentially some improvements to the basic 4.0 indeed have happened over the years, but never mind the point I was trying to drive at is that this temperature that we were uh, trying to uh, monitor uh, here on this uh, system here this uh, temperature here uh, was read by this uh, uh, samarium uh, sorry the neobdemium magnets which we uh, which we uh, explained which we showed in the previous uh, uh, in the previous chart which we said is neobdemium magnet these were the neobdemium magnets which were connected to this um, this uh, bearing and it was reading the change in the magnetic field using Hall sensors and after that all of that being interfaced to this nice little SOC ok. So, you can see this is a nice IOT system and a fantastic uh, way of measuring uh, the temperature condition monitoring of a ball bearing uh, and I pointed you to the paper which actually inspired us to build this complete uh, system. We will look at some results of this uh, board, uh, but before I close I want to tell you what this board actually has. This board is essentially um, I will draw a picture of this board. So, let us go back and draw what all does this board actually have. This board in the heart of it actually has this NRF 51822 and of course, we mentioned that this 51822 indeed has a Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, module for wireless communication to typically let us say a mobile phone app, mobile phone app or perhaps the dashboard of the driver ok. Because let us assume that this is a ball bearing that is part of an automobile and uh, the automobile bearing uh, temperature is being measured and being displayed on the dashboard of the automobile driver or it is also possible that this ball bearing is part of a operator in a workshop in a factory setup where there are lathes for instance or a milling machine or a lathe system which is essentially which also has a lot of these ball bearings for rotating uh, anywhere where there is a rotating a system with a motor connected you will need these ball bearing there are different sizes ok. Let us not get into that detail, but any rotating machinery will require this uh, ball bearing and this ball bearing temperature is now being monitored by let us say an operator who is interested in knowing how the equipment is actually functioning. So, it could be just that he has a mobile phone in his hand and any critical parameter is actually displayed directly on his mobile phone. Look at this IOT system there is an equipment uh, which has this uh, system and then you are trying to monitor several parameter critical parameters of the equipment itself the condition monitoring of this equipment itself. What is the novelty now of this board we mentioned about this board right this board has certain novelty and why did we why is this uh, uh, board very important and what is it trying to do both back as well as uh, in the front portion. Let us go back and put down what are the most important things. This NRF obviously has to be fed power right some power um, which uh, essentially means that it needs a VDD and a ground. Um, so, let us call this VDD and ground the good thing is this NRF which essentially is capturing data from the Hall sensor through some of its interfaces. If it is an analog interface it will be through an analog to digital converter interface. If it is through a, 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 a let us say a binary status it will be through a general purpose input output GPIO 
or if it is through any of the digital uh, bus interfaces can, it can either be through what are known as SPI or I to C interfaces these are digital buses this is an ADC analog interface this could be a simple uh, binary status of uh, 1 or a 0 uh, which could be coming through a GPIO. So, let me move this so that we draw our picture better this is ground and um, this is the GPIO this is an ADC and um, this is SPIO uh, or I to C right. So, so I so this is ADC actually it is written here ADC and I just wanted to demonstrate so I will improve this picture. So, so this is the ADC this is SPIO this is GPIO fantastic what is the novelty of that board board's novelty indeed is powering this board ok. This power board power supply or power VDD for this board is actually being harvested from the system itself ok. So, so I will show this so here this block is the most critical block pay all your attention here and um, this is harvested energy ok harvested energy how is it harvesting how do we uh, you know satisfy our curiosity let us go back and look at this board and let us actually look back at this system. What actually we have done to this system is if you look carefully there are these magnets right which are connected to the which are in close contact with the inner rays of the bearing that is what we said last time. If you look carefully this is the hall sensor electronics this one this hall sensor electronic essentially has these this there is actually a coil here which is connected maybe I will rotate and show you in a different perspective this you see is a coil ok this is a coil this is essentially a coil and uh, it is actually inducing a certain electric certain amount of energy because of these neobdemium magnets which are attached for the purposes of sensing the temperature of the bearing. So, what are you doing? You are doing a peculiar thing here in the sense that you are not only measuring the temperature of the ball bearing you are also using these neobdemium magnets for inducing a certain amount of energy voltage basically and a certain amount of power from this coil which is connected here ok. This is the coil you can see this blue one bluish color here this is a coil essentially. So, and this coil is essentially giving you a certain amount of power out every time this bearing rotates it induces a certain amount of voltage here. So, there is a certain amount of power drawn you condition all that power using this uh, PCB on which there are diodes if it is giving you an AC output rectify the supply and store that energy on this capacitor here this is a super capacitor and use this energy for the purposes of powering the hall sensor for temperature measurement. So, you can see you are actually bootstrapping the whole thing by rot by initially rotating anyway the system rotates and certain amount of energy is induced certain amount of voltage is induced by this uh, coil here and that powers this board here you do very clever power management put a very clever power management circuit which I have shown here in this block put a very very clever so I will call this smart put a very smart power management block here and you supply power back to this NRF 
for the purposes of sensing sensing could be either through analog to digital conversion or uh, ADC ports or SPI I 2 C if it is a digital sensor. Indeed in this specific case we are actually using the ADC. So, actually the uh, call sensor output is connected directly to this ADC here and this is actually measuring the ADC samples which is actually indicating the temperature of the ball bearing. Fantastic. So, this is the big summary of a nice IoT system that you can imagine uh, where you will have to look at ways of measuring a certain parameter where you will have to look at design alternatives. Every time when you say design for IoT you say look at alternatives in there is no one particular design which is best. You have to look because that is what you will learn all through your engineering that you will optimize one design for that particular application, but there can be many alternatives and this is one such alternative measurement. Now, let us look at all this is fine is this the only way to measure the whole uh, thing about bearing temperature why am I not using other methods of measurement. Let us look at let us say most popular way by which you do not want to be in contact with the bearing, but you want to measure the uh, temperature of the bearing could be using IR temperature sensors non invasive IR temperature sensors. Okay. So, let us shift our focus to another type of sensor which is here which is essentially uh, a sensor which is from a company called Panasonic. Okay. This is a Panasonic grid I E Y E sensor. This sensor is an 8 cross 8 sensor that means there are 64 pixels covering a certain uh, range or no, I would say a certain area certain area of temperature measurement but area of measurement area of measurement. Okay. So, how is this grid I uh, sensor uh, interfaced to the uh, whole uh, to the microcontroller? Again it is the standard way you have a microcontroller block. I mentioned to you previously about digital uh, communication block in this picture. You can be talking about the digital communication module which could be either through SPI or through I 2 C this is nothing but inter IC communication I 2 C is actually called inter IC communication SPI um, is um, serial peripheral interface. This essentially uses 3 or 4 wires 3 or 4 wires physically between uh, the uh, systems on which you want to do a communication and I 2 C essentially uses 2 wires. Okay. So, this microcontroller is essentially communicating to this grid I over I to C interface which means this you can now rub off this line and nicely replace it with 2 lines here. Um, and this is the grid I sensor. Now, I will draw oh sorry this um, a certain area of uh, measurement. So, I will just remove this here to okay. these will have to be connected to essentially um, I can draw it with a single line here you need some 
VDD here of course this is VDD and this is ground this also needs power so VDD and you need ground here. These two lines essentially are called um, there are names associated with this I2C one is called um, uh, SCL okay, and SDA obviously SCL indicates serial clock. So, let us call this SCL and this is SDA these are two pull up resistors to VDD we can look at typical values of these two resistors as we go along, but for the moment assume that these two pull up resistors are required um, and uh, this SCL essentially is the clock and SDA is the data which um, flows between the grid I to the microcontroller or microcontroller giving a command to the grid I sensor over a clock. Okay, so, as simple as that this is the essential interface going back to this setup let us see how this whole thing that I have shown here this whole thing how is this realized in actual practice let us look at this hardware. This hardware you can see has this Panasonic sensor here this is the grid eye sensor and if you look um, what all we have done with this this is a standard Arduino board right this is a standard Arduino board this is the microcontroller board that we have been talking about. So, it is interface between the two of them and what do you see if you develop this I2C driver and focus it on the any surface that you want to measure you will see 64 pixel elements which I am showing here. These 64 pixel elements that you see are essentially indicating the temperature if I change the direction of the grid eye sensor this will also change you can see let us first focus this grid eye sensor on one particular in one particular direction. So, let us now refocus back on this grid eye sensor ok. So, so let me put put the grid eye sensor like this now let us see the snapshot here look at this snapshot ok. Now let us look back at the grid eye sensor and turn it around like this now let us look back there you can see. So, you can see each of this you can count them that there are 64 pixel elements. Uh, there are nice colors indicating the temperature which are the colors are actually relative. You can see that the temperature of each pixel element is changing in a few areas for example, the first pixel element is changing by 1 degree 35, 34 and so on. The second pixel element uh, is actually changing to uh, 36 and, um, the, and, and so essentially this is giving you an array of uh, temperature values over which it is actually measuring the temperature. Now, you may ask what is the specification of this kind of grid I sensor for that let us put down the most important specifications most important um, specifications that you may have to look at. First thing you would be worried about is what is the power consumption of such a sensor ok. Uh, well, what we have done is we have operated this at 3.3 volts and it takes a current typical current consumption of uh, this uh, sensor is uh, uh, in let us say 4 is actually 4.5 milliamps under normal mode ok. There are other modes that the sensor supports which may not be of much use at the moment. Well, you will have to do power management by looking at this particular uh, thing. So, let me uh, for completeness let, let me just put down these 3 specification uh, put these 3 numbers 4.5 milliamperes under normal mode 
okay, 0 0.2 milliamperes when it is under sleep mode, it is under a sleep mode and uh, 0 0.8 milliamperes in what is known as a standby mode, okay, standby mode. Uh, we will just consider this particular uh, normal mode. Uh, well, it is uh, why is why are these two mo other two modes why are these modes important? Essentially, when you talk about um, IoT design for IoTs and you are putting you are you are basically um, you know sensing physical environments and you are driving them out of batteries, you have to really worry about how long do these batteries last? What is the cost of replacement of these batteries? there is a cost associated right. So, unless you maximize the amount of time these uh, these devices are actually monitoring or deployed for a particular purpose unless you maximize the lifetime it is uh, going to incur a huge the, the IOT deployment itself will incur a huge cost which may not be worth uh, sometimes uh, when you really um, when you look at very large scale because uh, people are actually talking about this, this, there are studies which talk about billions of devices by the year 2020, 20 billion, some reports say 20 billion, some reports say 50 billion. So, all that indicates that the huge number of devices and each of these devices are uh, powered using batteries. Well, that is a question right, which we will try and answer in this, uh, in this course and look at is battery the only way? can you do something interesting which we already explained now that you can actually harvest energy from the environment itself. So, we have just opened and said okay, this is a good possibility you can harvest energy opportunistically from the, the system itself, but let us look at the whole gamut of energy harvesting in a much more structured way as we go along. But before we go into that detail you must look at these parameters of 4.5 milliampere normal mode, sleep mode and standby mode only because you want to maximize the power consumption of this, uh, you want to minimize sorry, uh, you want to minimize the power consumption of the complete IoT system including the sensor, right. So, we are operating at 3 at 4.5 volts and we are uh, consuming uh, 4.5 milliamperes. If you do a simple multiplication this will give you 12 milliwatts plus 1.5 milliwatts this is 4 into 3 is 12 milliwatts 5 into 3 is 1.5 milliwatts I add both of it will give me 13.5 milliwatts. So, it is not bad it is ok, but it is still quite a bit of power 13.5 milliwatt of power if you keep it in on all the time. Therefore, you may want to look at options of shifting it to a standby mode and also sleep mode. Sleep mode is quite nice because if you are not using it, it is uh, not going to consume much. I would like to stop here.